Nice to see you again. It's Christmas since we last did it. This is Eclipse Baits. We showed you the product in the factory. We're now going to show you them in use, or how some of the ang some of our consultants use them. And we're just going to show you how we use a few of the products and how they get on in their fishing. Well, welcome to Bush Farm Fishery in Upminster in Essex. Um, newly opened. We've got the Eclipse guys down here this weekend doing a bit of filming, having some fun, hopefully catching a few fish for the cameras. Right, this is our fishery, just over four acres, uh, run as a premium day ticket, £30 for your membership, and then we do 12, 36 or 48 hour tickets. Uh, the fishery has existed for over 30 years, uh, run on a club basis, now changed, we opened in April, highly anticipated with a, a good restocking of VS fisheries, um, pretty scaly fish. Um, and our growth rates have been excellent. Some of the fish have already put on four to five pounds. Um, so we offer something different. The, uh, the whole complex is gated and fenced, so you're guaranteed security. Here we are in the well-stocked tackle shop at uh, Bush Farm. Um, stocking everything really from drinks, chocolate, full range of corder, mainline, Fox, ESP, literally everything you'll need for a good day's fishing at Bush Farm. It's open seven days a week, uh, 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. This is where you come and get your ticket at the start of your session, but you're welcome to pop in any time. We have adequate parking, gates are always open, pop in for a cup of tea. You'll find us on Facebook, Bush Farm Fishery. We've got all the contact numbers, uh, videos of the stocking, photos of the fish caught so far. Let's hope the guys from Eclipse have a few fish this weekend. Two fish caught last night. He was in the uh, tuna krill, uh, furos, angry little fish. Hello, my name is Dean Spratt. Um, a bit about my fishing. Uh, fish since I was near height to a grasshopper. Uh, started match fishing. Uh, slowly went away of carp fishing, um, which is now my passion. All my fishing takes place in the Lee Valley, uh, mainly chasing the harder carp to catch and the bigger the bigger fish, quality rather than quantity. So yeah, so uh, so I joined Eclipse Baits. I've been with them for about five years now. Um, as soon as I went with them, catch rates just went through the roof. Really, um, started on the Adrenaline, which is a great bait. I've done really well on it. Um, Went over to the virus and never looked back. Uh, took that to the matches, took that broad. It just seemed like everywhere I took it, uh, it put fish on the bank. Um, I've now gone onto the tuna krill. Just as it come out this year, and I was a bit sort of, um, I've always liked the krill sort of baits and thought I'd give it a go, and I'm still using it now, but I'll probably go back to virus because I do love that bait. So on this session, I have I've brought with me the tuna krill, which is what has been chopped up in there into a sloppy mix basically I've got two two rods on a spot uh, I've just, the general idea is it's only four foot deep out there I want to cloud the water up um, and try and the fish ain't feeding it's fishing really hard I'm just trying to make something happen in the terms of clouding the water up um, and, and just getting them sort of into a bit of a frenzy but in there it is there's 10 mils, there's half boilies, there's corn, there's, um, there's the stick mix, um, the matching stick mix by Eclipse Baits. Um, and that's just really watered down um, and that's just given off a really nice cloud. And that's literally fish 40 yards out, uh, two rods, half of a rod length apart. Yeah, so on this session, on, that, on one of them spots I was talking about, um, Naked chod, really. Everyone knows what it is, but it's very effective. It's very silty out there, so whilst leading around, I was definitely bringing in bits of leaf and chod, and it wasn't the cleanest of bottoms. So with this, I just know it's fishing. I have had two bites on it. One of them got away, but um, yeah, it's a really light lead, uh, size six, uh, choddy, and, uh, and that's a virus fluoro. So. Nice and simple, but don't be too bite, so hopefully more tonight.
Well, I've just had that catfish, 29 pound eight or whatever it was. And I've got my first carp, literally half an hour later. It's only 16 pound eight. Great scrap under the rod tip. Went off like a rocket. And he loves the Eclipse tuna and krill wafters. Well, hi, I'm Paul and I've been fishing for 36 years now, ever since I got my 499 Woolworths rod. And we used to go down the River Darren and catch a few minnows and sticklebacks. Then my fascination with carp arrived. We used to fish places like Dartford, Houghton Kirby and Paddlesworth. And I became absolutely obsessed with carp fishing. The major bit of carp fishing for me is having confidence and having confidence in your bait. If you've got confidence in your bait, it's one less element for you to worry about. All you've got to worry about then is obviously placing that bait in the correct position on the correct rig. Eclipse baits do various bodies in their ranges. These are the tuna and krill, and this is what I'm currently using at the moment. To complement these boilies, you get your wafters and pop-ups. And these also come with little booster attraction dips that you can just trickle over your baits just to give them that extra little bit of attraction. Talking of attraction, we've also got the highly visible pop-ups and pinks and whites there. And also the Krill Hydra Slate. Now you can add this to your stick mix, your spot mix, so you can glug your boilies in it and that gives you that extra attraction around your hook bait. Also we've got these high visibility baits. These are pop-ups like Tutti Fruity, Squid and Tutti. Another nice little edge are these little icon toppers. On lakes now you're beginning to find that plastic is beginning to get banned. So obviously these, these are higher tracks, they various colours, you've got your yellows and your washed out pinks. And you can use these to top your hook baits and also why not fish them on their own as pop-ups. So I've already used these baits to good effect on this trip. As I said, confidence is everything. This is a lake I've never fished before. I've turned up and I've used the Eclipse tuna and krill and I've managed to catch a 29 pound 8 ounce catfish on a bottom bait topped one of the little icon toppers. Also had a, a 16 pound 8 ounce mirror cart which come to one of the tuna and krill wafters. Again I used a little bit of the soak on the boilie just to give that extra little bit of attraction and that's what's done the business for me. My name is Andy Neal, been carp fishing since about 81. Um, early years was all making my own bait, buying ingredients and various sources, rolling them in the garage on a, on a hand roller, um, but slowly moved to bait companies, never really had any loyalty to anybody at all. Um, and then had a pretty poor season around 2010. I could see what Dave was doing on my local lake, he was a member of as well, and got on the, got on the virus, and never looked back really. Uh, I've got a life outside for carp fishing, and I love my carp fishing big time, but um, I've got other interests as well, so doing a couple of overnighters a, a week kind of fulfills my need for carp fishing and also allows me to have a life outside of it as well. The key thing is by going two nights a week and getting some bait in, you are getting bait in the lake every, every time you go, but by doing overnighters, the other thing to realise is that you're only there for about 12 hours, so there's no point in putting 30 kilos out when you arrive because you're only there, you'll be going by, you'll be packing up about half seven in the morning. So it's a, it's, a, it's a knack of getting enough to get the fish interested, but not making, putting so much out that your chances of taking to go down, down slightly, you know, quite, quite dramatically. So probably, I'm probably more of a kind of a hundred baits around each rod, 200 baits around each rod sort of person, um, or an overnighter, twice a week. If I've got more time, I'll put more out, but that's kind of where you are. Yeah, doing two short sessions, I mean, and I think the important thing is getting down that twice a week, no matter what the weather is, and whatever the conditions, keep going down there. Because even, even if you blank, you'll see something to lead you to the next, the next trip. So if I'm down Monday night and I blank in a certain swim, but I've seen three or four fish head and shoulder somewhere else, then I think, right, Friday, I'll, I'll try and get back in there on the, on the next trip. So even a blank is never a wasted, a wasted trip. You'll always learn something for next time to go back with. Hi, I'm Lee and I've been carp angling for 16 years. My carping journey started when I was a boy. I used to go carp fishing, or generally fishing with my dad. 
He was the one who taught me the ropes, got me into it, gave me that bug. And I used to go sea fishing with my dad until I was old enough that I could strap the rods to my bike. And then, then I would take on these adventures on my own, head into local park lakes, head into little canals, anywhere that I could travel to safely on my own. Throw your sandwiches in a bag of crisps in your rucksack and you was gone for the day. That was it, not to return until dusk, where you'd explain what you'd caught to your dad and the adventures that you'd had along the way. But for me, particles are a big part of today's fishing and they're a big part of my fishing. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what I use and why. So today with me, I've got the spod mix. This contains crushed oats, crushed maize, crushed hemp, uh, some other wheat grains in there, a little tiny bit of dairy and a little bit of aniseed. This is purely to please the anglers with their choice because it smells nice and it adds a little bit of flavour to it. It also has a food stimulant added in there, in the soaking stage. Again, it's completely safe to use. The guys at the factory have made this so that you just literally fish this straight out of the bag into your spod mix. To complement it, everybody's favourite is the hemp. Everybody I know uses hemp in some point in their carping life. Um, somewhere out there you've been using hemp. Generally, this is a three to one ratio that I would mix these, three of these to one of these, uh, depending on the situation. Added to that, I sometimes add a little bit of ground bait. This is the hot and spicy ground bait, again, that I'm using today. All prepared by the guys at Eclipse, ready to use straight out of the bag. You can make stick mixes and all sorts out of this, to be fair. And added to my spod mix, I always add my faithful boilies. This is purely because your hook bait's gonna be in there, so why not fish a few freebies in your spod mix? Make it accurate, accurate fishing. Now to make it sloppy, we add something called the gravy. This is to create that sort of gloopy, soupy effect so that you get lots of attractants either soaking into your boilies, just making your ground bait that little bit more stodgy so that when you get it out there, you're giving yourself as much of a chance to get that attraction to the fish as possible. So now let's make up one of my mixes. Right, so making my mix, I will take my bag of spod mix, cut that open, make sure I don't lose my scissors. And then I will tip that, all those contents, into my bait bucket. Like so. I'll then add my hemp, like so. Cut that bag open, tip that all in there, like so. And then I'll give it, I like to get an old stick off the bank, I left my bait spoon at home, so acts quite nicely to be fair. And give that a good stirring in, make sure it's all mixed up nicely. Like so, <clears throat> I then, today, I'm gonna add a little bit of ground bait mix because I wanna make it a little bit stodgy. Hold some of the oils that I'm gonna put, or say hold the gravy in there, keep a bit of the attractant. So I'd put a little bit of the ground bait in, not too much because it will go really, really dry. And you can always dampen it down if you really want to. So give that a good stir, get it right to the bottom. Make sure it's all mixed in. My gravy. Loads of this stuff, you can never ever put too much. That all gets tipped in there. This is where I usually spill it all over myself, make a mess. But that's carp fishing. If you're not messy, you're not enjoying yourself, and I think. Mean. Again, that all goes, see how stodgy that's looking? Lovely. Sits in the spod nicely, doesn't leak out. Or your spawn, whichever you choose. Maximum impact for your flavour. And again, going in my little box of tricks, just to complement your spod mix, as I say, I add boilies to it, because I generally fish hook baits. Get out a crusher, handful of boilies, just in your crusher. Little bit of a chop, 
add some chops in there, give that a nice stirring in. It's all different sizes, different flavours, something that may well confuse the carp in figuring out which is your hook bait. You could quite happily fish um, grains of maize or sweet corn in this, you don't have to fish boilies. It's whatever you choose, whatever your preferred style is. So that's my spod mix. I would generally make all that up either before I go or on the bank when I get there and feed that in as and when I need to, depending on the fishing situation. Craig Stone's been fishing seriously for carp for probably probably about 16, 17 years, but I've always fished since I was a young lad, 15, 14. Always enjoyed it, but never really the challenge of the big carp. You know, it's only the last 17 years or so that I've really got onto chasing large fish. For the last five years, I've been fishing a syndicate in Essex and really been targeting the bigger fish. Um, mainly doing a campaign style of fishing with pre-baiting. Uh, never done much of that before, but it's really come to good effect, especially with using the virus. For the last two years, since April 2014, it's really uh, cracked on and baiting up heavily after fishing and, and returning within a few days to rebait or fish has really been a big success and the virus has really helped with that. On most campaigns I was taking a five kilo bag of virus with me for the night, putting a kilo out over each rod and, and then putting the rest in after when I left the next day. But in conjunction with the virus I was using a multi-rig with generally a white virus pop-up, glugged up with the booster, which is fantastic. Completely opposite to what the bait was on the bottom, but the fish were having it and I think they were preoccupied on on that certain bait, to be fair. It was, uh, I was, every week it was happening, and to be honest, I was shocked myself that it, it continued for so long. Uh, after Christmas, I changed my campaign to short sessions fishing and margins, day, a lot of day sessions. As a fish, the weed bed had died all back, and the fish were under the trees and in short, and the same sort of method, heavy baiting and fishing white pop-ups over the top, with the boosted virus dip, it was, was just kept, the results just kept coming, it was uh, fantastic. This is the first one of a brace, it's gone absolutely crazy in my swim, and I've got this lovely zip linear, 16 pound 10 ounces, on the Eclipse Tuna and Crew Wafter, and I've got another one in the sling down there. I haven't weighed that one yet, but it's all gone crazy on the final night of our trip to Bush Farm. So this is the second of the brace, 13 pound four, half lin, another pretty little fish. This one took tuna and krill bottom bait with icon topper. So I'm Kyle, I work at Eclipse Baits and I got into carp fishing from when I was younger. Um, my dad took me float fishing and then from then it progressed onto feeder fishing, then onto carp fishing and then I caught my first carp and that was it, I was hooked. So today we're over at Bush Farm, uh, just on a social. Normally I'm on my own fishing in a hidden little bay somewhere, putting lots of bait out on a big pit. Um, I've just joined this year. I've been using the virus, been putting quite a bit in, trying to get the fish onto it, because not many people have used it. Um, so I'm just getting it going in there, and the virus 15 mils are just doing the business at the minute. 
So the virus was designed for my fishing. It's my blend of flavours. Um, and I'd done so well on it on the first year in the testing stage that we decided that it was going to have to be a bait to come out. I think I'd done 50 nights and ended up with 180 something fish. Okay, so when I go fishing, I will take any of the Eclipse range, so it be hot adrenaline, cream ball, the virus, the adrenaline, any of them, but my personal choice, if the freezers are fully stocked, is definitely virus, 100%. Now I've been, um, I've been fishing, carp fishing since I was 10. Um, started off sort of like just on my local lake, local day ticket lake. Uh, just sort of quiver tipping and that sort of stuff to start with. Then we moved on to carp fishing. I've been fishing sort of on and off since then. Obviously I've uh, got a young family, so my time's limited now. Um, fishing's mainly sort of day sessions. If I'm lucky, I might get a quick overnight or maybe even a couple of nights, but that is rare. Uh, the bait I've been using for all my fishing for the last five, six years, so, I don't know, when, probably when this was first created, but so before it was even released, I would have been using this bait, uh, obviously, Dad's company. Really, like I use this for all my types of fishing, 80 mil, 80 mil straight out of the bag. Uh, I've got no... I don't use anything else, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I don't use anything else. I might occasionally use a virus pop-up or a virus wafter, um, but I'm using this for 99.9% of my fishing. Fish all different types of venues, sort of some of like the more well-known day ticket venues, runs waters, syndicate lakes. Um, I've used this, like I say, for sort of six, six years now. I've got utmost confidence in this bait. Uh, my name's Ian Simmons. Um, I've been fishing since I was about oof, five or six. Um, I'm 39 now. Uh, I've been carp fishing at least 25 years. Uh, it all stems from a, a, a nicked copy of a, a carp fever, which I read non-stop and uh, yeah, it just inspired me to carp fishing. So <laughs> We're at a bush farm in Upminster um, on the Eclipse Bait Social. Uh, not been a great weekend for me. Uh, I got pegged in this this swim, uh, very very shallow. A um, lot of it fishing across to far margins and things. Um, there's been fish up here, and I, I lost one yesterday, unfortunately, just to a hook ball. Um, but it's very very dirty bottom. You've really got to think a bit outside the box to, to get a presentation. Um, I've ended up putting hook baits off of baited areas, so so that they're not sort of wafting all the the silt and uh, crud over it. Um, but yeah, finally paid off this afternoon, and like I say, I lost it, unfortunately. <laughs> well, bait, um, as we all know, is, is the most important thing other than location, obviously, because you, they, they've got to want to pick a, pick a bait up, they've got to want to eat it um, in the first place, so bait's massively important in my own fishing, um, whether it be pre-baiting or actually just fishing day to day. Um, you need something that's, that's long-term, but also full of attraction and goodness, you know. My own fishing uh, is, at the moment, I'm on a club water um, out Chelmsford Way. Uh, well, it's a series of waters, but the one I'm on is uh, pretty tricky water. You know, you've, you've had a sort of few a handful of fish uh, a year. You've done all right out there. Uh, a lot of it is it's very similar sort of parallels to fishing here, really, because it's uh, a lot of really bad bottom, really bad silt where uh, the river flooded in there a few years back uh, and washed a load of rubbish in, so the bottom still hasn't settled properly. Uh, so a lot of it's edge fishing. Um, but that brings its own set of problems because you, you're, you're fishing for some very, very big fish uh, that in very shallow water, really. Um, and that's the only presentable area because that's where it's hardest. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you've got your own set of problems there. You can get them feeding in the edge, but getting to take a bait is, is a, the hook bait is a totally different matter because uh, they're not sort of feeding like they normally would at tilting. You know, they're feeding very, very level. So you need, uh, you need to think about your... your your baiting approach and also your, the way the rig's going to behave once it's picked up um, because they don't straighten out the hook length for a lot of the time. So you need something a little bit uh, clever, which I'll show you in a minute. 
Yeah, this is the rig that I mentioned earlier. Um, and like I say, uh, a lot of the fishing this year for me has been uh, in close, um, pretty shallow water to be honest, where they don't get a chance to upend and feed as, as they normally would in open water. So I had to come up with something that, I, that would um, work uh, for a couple of, pr couple of uh, principles. Um, I still want the hook to be able to turn if, um, if it's dragged across the bottom lip. Um, so, you know, I've incorporated a line liner, extended bit of shrink tube. Um, but I wanted the hook to be able to be in a prone position straight away the moment it's sucked up. And the hook, hook bait choice is really crucial for that. Um, Dave's uh, or Eclipse's um, wafters are perfect for that. They're exactly the right buoyancy, especially with uh, you know, a fairly big hook like I'm using. Um, it will actually, the hook will sit down flat and the waft will just sit up ever so slightly proud, but it doesn't look unnatural. So, but um, <clears throat> what happens, as soon as that's sucked up, the hook immediately can drop. As you can see, it can drop. Um, there's a little counterbalance there, counterweight there, that helps just orientate the hook. Um, so even before it's dragged across the bottom lip, as in a lot of the way the normal rigs work, um, it's, it's already in prone position. Yeah, I've been with Eclipse Bait since its inception. Um, it's great quality bait, yeah, fantastic. Um, I've caught a lot of good fish on it over the years, um, and I've sort of seen it all evolve um, to where it is today. You know, so yeah, I'm proud to be part of it.